Six years ago, I bought a Logitech Driving Force GT and clamped it on my desk to play racing games. I learned a lot with it for a year and then upgraded to a G29, which would stay with me for a long time. With it, I was able to develop my technique and started getting national titles in esports competitions in Brazil, as well as some official season championships in iRacing, and I also started coaching. All of these achievements on the entry level humble G29. Now think about the emotional bond that I have with this brand. When I received the Logitech G Pro racing wheel and pedals, I almost cried. It was a different day for sure. It all came back. A big portion of my story is related to it, made possible by it. Now I'm a pro. I coach, I race, both in the simulator and in real life. I breathe motorsports. The Logitech G Pro racing wheel and pedals takes the user-friendly hardware and reliability to the next level. 100 kilos load cell brakes, an 11 Nm direct drive force feedback, and I will talk about the true force later, make it just perfect for high-level competition. When I moved from my VRS Direct Force Pro and Heusingfeld Sprint sets to the Logitech G Pro set, it took me just some hours to adapt, and on the very next day I was able to qualify for the Ferrari Velas Esports Series North American races in the front row. This is not a paid review. I am going to try to be entirely honest with my experience, from mounting to setting it up and driving, although I remember feeling pure happiness when it arrived because of my history with Logitech. So there may be a little bit of biased information here and there for sure. First up, the price. It's just insane. $999 for the wheel and base, $349 for the pedals. This price for 11 Nm DD and Pro Wheel with dual clutch is just unbeatable. For comparison, I remember paying $2,000 for the VRS wheel and my old Cube Controls plus quick release. That was 20 Nm, but I really only used 50%, which is 10 Nm. More than that is most likely overkill for most people. And the pedals? $349 for a 100 kilo load cell, I paid around $750 for my old Heusingfeld Sprint set, which had 65 kilo load cells. About the pedal, I found my sweet spot at around 90 kilos, because I found that 100 was a little bit too heavy, and 65 is definitely too light. Having this 100 kilo range makes it basically fit the entire population for $349. When I first heard about it, I wanted to call a friend and scream about it because they simply nailed it with these specs. The cost benefit of this set is a nuclear bomb for the market. I, and I was even scared about the quality it would have for this price. But I was wrong. They for sure maintained their reputation. TLDR, Logitech has dominated the entry level market for a long time. And now they just made the right, although very, very late, move to dominate the high-end sim racing market as well. The wheelbase is big, but not too heavy. The casing feels and looks neat, and the power and menu buttons are in the base itself, as well as a screen that shows the menu and options to choose from and the RPM lights. I literally mounted this wheelbase using nothing but its clamp. It's an incredibly robust and efficient clamp that made me immediately dismiss bolting the wheel on my rig. It never moved a single millimeter after using it for several weeks on maximum force feedback. In the wheelbase, you can set up profiles, and in each profile you can set up things like force feedback, torque and filter, true force torque, audio intensity and filters, dampening, wheel angle, RPM modes and brightness, as well as full control of the left and right pedals under the shifters. You can also set what platform you're using the wheel, whether it's a PC or a console, and you can set the compatibility of the base between the Pro Wheel and the G923. After using it for three weeks, these little features feel more or less like the GoXLR feels for a streamer. You cannot go back after using it for a while. It's just way too convenient, and you would go crazy without it afterwards. The wheel reminds me a lot the G923. The buttons are placed similarly, although there are more of them and they are more advanced. The leather grip feels a little bit slippery until you get used to it, so gloves would help with that, although I've been driving without gloves all this time and got used to it fairly quickly. I always smile a little bit when I release and reattach the wheel to the base because it's way too convenient. You can do it in literally 2 seconds, with one hand. There will be more versions of add-on wheels that will be launched in the future, and I will definitely buy all of them. 
The magnetic pedal shifts are built in a way that it's almost impossible to accidentally double shift or miss shift. I haven't experienced any of that in the three weeks I've been testing it. The second clutch works great. You can adjust your bite point through the wheelbase in a matter of seconds. The release of the clutch also felt perfectly smooth. It doesn't make you release too quickly or too slowly. Since the very first launch practice, I've nailed pretty much all of my starts. For those who follow me on Twitch, you know that I love starting from the back, and I always end up getting two or three positions with the second clutch start, and I pretty much maintained that reputation after changing wheels as well. This is where the simplicity shows itself. Maybe even a little bit too much. The pedals are not incredibly adjustable, and I wanted them to go a little bit higher, but they do their job just fine. I actually got used to them more quickly than I got used to the new wheel, and my braking precision has actually increased a little bit if comparing to my old Heisingfeld sprints because of the extra kilos that I could use. Limiting the brakes from reaching 100% in iRacing is a thing from the past for me now. Since I received the pedals before launch, I noticed that it was not possible to adjust brake curves or dead zones, bottom and top, in the software. Although I'm still using the pedals without the dead zones that I used to have, I adapted immediately to the new ones and I don't think I will be adding any dead zone anymore. You would have to rest your foot a little bit too much to end up activating the first percent of brake pressure, so it's good. The throttle pedal feels precise and I didn't even think about it. I went on track and my throttle control was just the same I had before, so for me it is simply perfect. We don't mess with what's perfect. The clutch also feels precise and linear and has the same resistance the throttle has. It's not too light, so it feels robust and consistent. Now, what is this true force thing? Actually, it's really not bad. Think of it as a polished third-party force feedback like the IRFFP for iRacing, but with absolutely zero delay and a butt kicker included in it. It's a different force feedback plus tactile feedback through audio. When I tried it, I was amazed by how cool it makes driving feel. After some time, I started getting a little bit overwhelmed with the engine vibration since it was a little bit too loud and it becomes useless after some time. I contacted Logitech about the possibility of adjusting the volume of feedback for each different effect like engine notes, slip, bumps, curbs. So if this happens, I'm gonna be obsessed by it. Does it make you faster? Mm, although I did hit my best times with True Force after alternating both modes for around 10 quality runs, I'd say it doesn't make you directly faster, but it seems to make you reach your limit slightly earlier. I tested True Force on versus off, both maxed out at 11 Nm, and it was definitely more detailed and fun with it, but the lap times are very close. My best lap time with True Force was a tenth quicker than my best lap time with the original Force Feedback. Mind that this was 40 minutes of comparison with not a lot of practice. The original force feedback feels empty after you try true force for a bit. The fact that it has a thousand hertz and most simulators actually support that since they developed a native support in conjunction with Logitech makes me want to stick with it much more than the original force feedback, which is in iRacing, for example, 60 hertz. If you have the G923 or the G Pro wheel, it would be just a bad idea to not use True Force. It definitely makes the experience more interesting. After almost one month using it, when I come back to the original Force feedback, it feels weird. This is the sweet spot of cost benefit. I love it. So easy to install, to move around, to set up, to use, and it has everything you need to be on the top level. Driving with it, I qualified for a high level sim racing event and maintained exact same lap times and consistency as I had with the equipment I have used before for years. This is truly high end stuff. There is still work to be done in the software side to make it perfect, but I'm sure they'll make it happen. Thank you Logitech for recognizing my work and sending me one of these to give feedback about. I will definitely keep using it for the next many months to come and stream it on Twitch. Since I always want to be transparent, I am partnering with Logitech, although this is not a paid review. If you want to try the G Pro and want to support my work, please consider buying them through my affiliate links. If you have any questions about the wheel or anything else really, just send me a message here or in any of my social channels. See you on track. By the way, don't forget to check out the videos about my transition from sim racing to real life. All the vlogs are available on this channel, so subscribe and check it out.